in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how you can become a full stack blockchain developer on the Ethereum network. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can become a full stack Web3 developer. But if you get stuck at any point in time in this video, head over to the hashtips.online website, click on Discord over there, and then join the Discord space. There are thousands of devs ready to help and facilitate you if you get stuck in any of these videos. I hope that helps and solves some of the problems, but let's jump in and see how you can become a full stack Web3 developer on the Ethereum blockchain. Okay, so where do we start off with? Well, first things first, in order for you to become a full stack Web3 developer, you need to set up a proper environment. Familiarize yourself with the key technologies and what they do in order to feel comfortable enough to play around. The technologies that we'll be looking at is firstly Solidity, which is the programming language that we'll be using. We're going to be using Hardat as well. This is to deploy and build your Solidity uh, contract. And then we're also going to make use of React, which you can replace for any front end. But React is basically the front end part. We're going to use a provider, in our case, MetaMask, and then also Ethers.js to communicate with the blockchain through the web browser. In order to use the technologies that we just pointed out, Go ahead and install Node.js because we'll need it to install the key dependencies and then as well an IDE. The IDE I'm going to use, which is simply a code editor, is Visual Studio Code. So you can also download a version for your operating system too. Then make sure that you have indeed installed MetaMask's uh, web extension. So on Chrome, it will look like this and you should have your MetaMask extension here. And then for now, we're going to just point it to the Rinkeby network. This is where you switch between test networks and the real main network. And you can choose a bunch of other networks too. But for now, I'm going to just be on the Rinkeby test network. Next, let's go ahead and create a folder. So I'm going to create a folder and call it my DAP ENV because this is going to be the smart contract as well as the front end as well. So this is a DAP environment, right? A full stack environment. And then once I have started this, I can go ahead and open Visual Studio Code, click on open, go to my desktop and open this folder. Now we should see DAP ENV at the top over there and we're ready to go. The next thing I always like doing is going to the terminal, click on new terminal at the top, and then let's just make sure that we have node installed. So type node-v, and you should see some kind of version showing up. If you don't, please reinstall node.js. Great, let's go and see what dependencies we'll need. We are going to be using React as our front end, so let's go ahead and create a React app. We can use the create-react-app, which is a little bit of a helper function to set up a environment for us for React. And then let's call this our dap. So just hit enter, and then I'm just going to enter Y. Everything is good. And this will build out the kind of scaffolding for our React uh, dap. So now that we actually have this dap created, in the terminal, we need to make sure that we are going to install the dependencies that we need, such as hardat, ethers, chai, and we can do that all in one command. But first, very important, let's type in cd dap, which will mean that we are going to go inside of this directory. This is where we need to install our dependencies. And you can do this by typing in this one line command. What this command does is it installs ethers, hardat, a bunch of hardat extensions, as well as chai for testing. Hit enter and let's wait for that to complete. It looks like it's done. So we're going to clear the terminal. I'm going to press command K. And now we can actually, while we're still in the DAP folder, 
we can run npx hard at. This will initialize hard at and also create for us a configuration file. Let's run that. So hard at gives us a few options. I'm going to go with the first one, create a basic sample project. This is the root directory. So yes. And then uh, do you want to add this to get ignore? I'm just going to say enter. And it says that the directory contains files. The readme can conflict. So basically I'm going to delete my readme file, then run this again. And there we go. Project created. So now we actually see a few extra files and folders in our DAP. So hard add conveniently now set up for us a basic project, adding for us first this contracts folder. In this folder is where you will type out your Solidity contract. And here you can see actually is a starter one called greeter.sol. We can close that. And then we also have a script folder. This is where the deployment takes place. So whenever you run this, then it will be deployed. And based on your configuration setup, it will deploy to the mainnet, testnet, or even a local node. Then we also have a, a testing folder. This is to test each individual smart contract, which we'll get into. And then lastly, also this hard act config. Now, this file is very important. It's the entry point, And this tells hard at how to behave, what Solidity compiler version to use. But there's also something that we'll need to set up. The config that we would like to add is going to be added under the Solidity compiler. And this is how it looks. It's this section over here. So just add that to your configuration. But basically what it means is that this path section over here tells the compiler to go and build the artifact in our source directory over here. The reason for that is because in our React app, we cannot access anything outside, and that is why it needs to exist inside of the source directory. That is the first thing. The next thing that we need to look at is this networks and the chain ID. So, MetaMask apparently has a little bit of a uh, chain ID issue. And to resolve it, they just recommend pointing the chain ID to 1337. And that is just something that we'll need to do to make this work. Okay, so I've cleared the terminal. And because our configuration is now set in place, what we can do, and because Hardat has given us this base project, this greeter.sol, we can go ahead and compile it then see if in the source directory indeed we get the artifact. To do this, in your terminal, run npx hard at compile. After running it, it had to download the compiler and then it compiled successfully. Here in the source directory, we can see we've got the artifact folder now. And inside there, we've got three other folders and a contract folder. In here, there's the greeter.json and here is our ABI. So this is actually describing what is possible with this contract. So when you change something in your contract, you will need to recompile it to make sure the ABI is also up to date. The ABI of a contract is extremely important. It acts as a blueprint, telling us exactly what the contract consists of, which methods, variables there is for us to use. But in order to use something in a contract, the contract actually needs to be deployed on a network. When we're talking about networks, we have the main network on Ethereum, testing networks, but we also have something called local networks, which are nodes that spun up on your machine acting like a blockchain. And that's what Hardat also gives us. So in order to start a local node for now, click on this plus icon. Then again, Go and cd into the dap and run npx hardat node. Hardat will then spin up a local blockchain for us. And each blockchain has kind of an entry point where we can point to and find this node. This is our entry point for the local node. As well as it gives us a list of addresses and their private keys. Each address has 10,000 ether on it, test ether, 
and uh, we can use this to deploy our contract to. So we can basically deploy our contract on this testing network. We can also import the testing network as well as wallet addresses into MetaMask. Let's go and do that next. So let's go ahead and copy this private key over here. By the way, never show your private keys to anyone. This is testing accounts, so this is fine in this case. Now, let's go ahead, go to Chrome, open the MetaMask extension. And if you go here to the top where the network section is, you can show and hide your network, your testing networks, by the way, if you don't see it down here. Now remember, our endpoint indeed points to 8545. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to go ahead and import a new account. So here on the accounts, I'm going to say import account and paste my private key over there. Then click on import. Now I can see because I'm on the right network, it picks up that this address indeed has 10,000 Ether. So now we can say that we've set up our MetaMask to connect to this local node that we have running in our terminal. Okay, so let's go ahead and deploy our contract, this greeter.sol. Now that we have compiled it, we also have the ABI, we have spun up our local node, we can go ahead and deploy it. The first thing is we need to move back to our previous terminal because we need to leave the terminal running with our node. So go back to the previous terminal and run the following command. Before we do, we need to go into the scripts directory and change the script to deploy.js. Now we can go ahead and run the following command. npx hard add run scripts deploy.js and under the network our local host. If we run this, this should deploy our contract and there we can see it has been deployed to this address. This is the address of the newly deployed contract. We can see if it did work by going back to our node, go down and here you can see there was a contract that was created. Apart from getting the confirmation over here on our local node, we can also see on the MetaMask address that we've imported that we have no longer 10,000 Ether. We have a little bit less because there was some cost involved, some gas, deploying this contract. I also want to mention that in the environment, remember we have this test folder? Well, we can use this test to run things before we deploy it. So let's go back and just run a quick test. What we can do is basically run hard at and instead of compile, test. Once you do this, we're going to run all the tests in this folder over here. And here we can see that this is what should happen and the test passed. Throughout our journey, we will learn how to write these tests, write new smart contracts, and deploy them on various networks. One thing that I still want to show is how to connect this smart contract that we've deployed over here on our test network to the front end, maybe reading the data and updating the data. Okay, so now it's time for us to hook up our front end. Head over to the app.js and type in this piece of code. I'm going to slowly go through it line by line so you know exactly what it does and it's basically just to get the concept over to you, understanding how we connect to the blockchain, in this case, the local node, creating an instance of our contract and interacting with the blockchain. So at the top over here, we have our import statement. This is just a normal React import statement to use the use state and use effect. This will help us re-render the component. Then we have ethers.js. This library, like we said, helps facilitate us making calls, interacting with our contract. Then we have the greeter JSON file. This file is actually, if you can recall, coming from the artifacts over here. This file contains our ABI, which we'll use to instantiate and work with our contract later on. Looking at the app component here at the top, first of all, we've got two variables, 
data and contract. And keep in mind, when set contract or set data is called, the component will re-render and it will have the new data or the new contract in here. We then have two functions, get data and update data. This function over here will get the data from our contract and this one will update it. Let's briefly look at the contract just to understand what we are doing here. So keep in mind that in get data, we are going to await for the contract and call the greet method. And on the update method, we're going to await for the contract and we're going to set greeting, passing in the data field over here at the top. If we take a look at the contract itself, we can see that it has this function greet, which returns to us a string. Then we also have a set greeting, which takes in a string and then sets the local variable or the private variable over there. And that's basically all they do. So in our app.js, in our front end, we're going to be using the contract instance that we're going to create down here to get the greet and set the greeting. One thing that you notice is that these functions are asynchronous, which reminds me this also needs an async um, declaration. But anyway, we need to wait for the blockchain to give us back some data. So there's always this wait for something to happen, then do something. In this case, we're waiting for the data to get back. Once we have it back, we set it in our local variable over here. In the update data, we're waiting for the transaction to finish, and then we're calling get data again, just so that we can get the updated data. If we scroll a bit down, we can see we have this init connection function. This function is being called once over here with the help of the use effect hook. But what does it do? Well, firstly, it checks on this line if we have some kind of Ethereum object in the browser, usually meaning that we have MetaMask installed. If we don't have MetaMask, we will just console.log, please install MetaMask. But if we do have MetaMask, what will happen is on this line over here, on line 22, we will pop up MetaMask asking the user to sign in. We will also ask them to sign so that we have the right privileges to query the blockchain. Then once we have the provider, which is in this case MetaMask and the signer, we have everything we need to create a new instance of a contract. And this instance, Ethers will be able to use to query different things via the ABI. For instance, we can then say contract.greet, contract set greeting. So once we have that information, this is where we create a new contract instance. The contract will take the contract address, the ABI, and the signer. Then we store this in the set contract variable over here. And that's why we can use contract.greet all over our code. And that's basically what it does. For the front end part, which is actually just showing on the web page, we have two buttons, which is get data and set data. We've got an input field, and then we've got a P tag displaying the data coming back to us. Let's go ahead and save this file and then open a new terminal. Again, CD into the DAP and then simply type NPM run start. And then once we do that, we will start our React application. Here we can see it is pretty ugly, but we do have get data, set data and our input field. I have previously connected to this DAP so I disconnect it and I'm gonna refresh it one more time. As I do that, we can see that MetaMask pops up and it wants us to connect. I'm gonna say cool, connect, and now we are connected. We can now go ahead and query the database, AKA the contract on the blockchain or on our local node. If we click on get data, we will see hello hard hat. Why is that? Well, when we deployed the contract, 
we can see in the deployment script, we deployed the greet to um, actual contract with the initial value, hello hard hat. But we can go ahead and change that now. So if we go back to our DAP, we can type in something new. I can say, hi, Daniel. Then I'm going to set the data. We are going to be required to do and perform a new uh, transaction. So I'm going to click on confirm. And then we can see how long it takes by looking at it here. And it's already done because this is a local blockchain. It's very fast. And if I refresh and I get the data now, I get hello, Daniel, or hi, Daniel. But the point is, is that the data has been changed. We can get the data, we can set the data, we can truly interact with the contract on the local blockchain. But this is a local blockchain. So how do we deploy this onto a test network or the main network? Okay, so in order for us to deploy this to a test network or the main network, the process stays the same. You're going to go in your hard hat configuration and here on the networks, we're going to add a network. In my case, I want to add the Rinkeby network. You can add the main network and so on as well. But we need to have two key things, an accounts private key, which I'm not going to share in this video, as well as the inferior API key. This is what is going to basically replace MetaMask and provide that connection to the blockchain for us. So first things first is let's go and get the Infura key. What you want to do is head over to Infura.io, sign in and create an account. It is free. So here I can create a new project. In this case, I want to do an Ethereum project. And here I'm just going to call it test. I'm going to create it and then wait for it to load up. Here are a lot of secret keys that you should not share with anyone. And I'm most likely going to remove this project right after this video. The endpoint that we are looking for is basically going to be the Rinkeby test network. Select main network if that is uh, your use case. So I'm going to copy it over here. Then go back to my program and replace the key in here. The last key we'll need is actually a private key to the wallet that we're going to be using to deploy the smart contract. Now notice that this is sitting in an array. It's not the same as a string. So just make sure you replace this part over here. Now I'm going to go and grab that key. I'll show you where to get it and then put it here, but I won't show this on video. How you get the key is by going to MetaMask. Make sure that you are on the right network and ensure that you have some test ether in here. Then go to the three dots, click on account details and export the private key over here. I'm going to do that, replace the key, and then we're going to run the command. Okay, so I've exported my key, replaced it in the hard hat configuration, and now I've saved it. And usually I will delete that information right after a video like this or when I do a real deployment just to keep it safe. Next, what we can run is choose a terminal. I'm going to use this one where we did the test and then run the following command. This is going to run the deploy, but instead of local, we're using the Rinkeby network. So this time hit enter and let's deploy this app on the Rinkeby test network. So hitting enter, it will do its thing. It will use Infura's key and your private key and it will deduct some ether and it will deploy. So let's give it a second. And there you go, success. We can now copy this address. We can go to rinkeby.etherscan.io, enter it. And here's our newly deployed contract. Here we can click on contract, read, and uh, we can actually see that there's similar match source code um, that has been deployed. So it's automatically verified for us, which is crazy. Uh, this sometimes might not be the case and you'll need to go to hard at and you can just maybe implement this verification method. But in any case, we have our contract on the blockchain on the test network 
and that is how it's done. I want to take a second to congratulate you on making it this far. If you enjoyed the content, leave me a thumbs up and subscribe and don't forget to comment, I really do read those. Then, I want to say that the following videos are going to be around smart contracts, ideas and things we can create. But I will be doing it in Remix. Remix.ethereum is a great online IDE for quick concepts of smart contracts and testing them out. Now everyone knows that Remix is not a full development system and that's why I've made this video to show you the alternative, the longer route but the more solid path of Web3 development. I really hope you enjoyed this video and in the meantime, go to the Solidity documentation and read up on it. It will help you out so much and also prepare you for the following videos that I'm going to make. Till next time, I hope you had a tremendous time with me. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video. Cheers for now.